The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading, and we got markets right near the highs of yesterday. Slight negative action this morning. We got some strong earnings from the banks, man. Got some tough announcement from Boeing. They'll be pausing 737 MAX deliveries. They got some issues there. Boeing down about 5% to kick things off. Markets barely in the red this morning. We got retail sales to get into. Let's take a look at the S&Ps right now. S&Ps negative by about eight points. We put it back to a five minute chart. There's your volatility on the retail sales number up to 41, what's it, 4177.50. And we've backed off a bit, kind of right where we were to about 6 a.m. this morning. NASDAQ 100, we're backing off a bit. We got some movement in notes, bonds, dollar, all over the place this morning. Tech stocks growth down about seven tenths percent. We got the Dow negative by 29 points. The Russell negative by just one. Crude. 82.25 this morning, you jump over to gold, giving back some of the gains. There's your volatility on some of the currency action on gold. We're up to 2060 and change yesterday. Boom, you spiked to 2032. We're trading at 2039, gold down $16 right now. And let's get into notes and bonds. There's some action for you on the retail sales number. From 115.19, down almost a full point. And folks, it was down a full point. Check that out. From where it was at 6.10 a.m. this morning, 115.23. Make it a 114.23 spike. We're trading right now at 115.01 on the 10 year, the 30 year, down 24 ticks. Some volatility there sitting at 131. You jump over to the dollar index. Reacting as you may expect, as we got some lower price, higher yield, that's going to put a little bit of a bid in the dollar index. You go from about just under 101. We're trading at 101.22. It's been quite a fall off for the dollar index this week from almost 103 to kick things off on Monday. You traded down two full points in the dollar index. We're catching a little bit of a bid today. We jump over to the VIX. 1796. We got a 17 handle in the VIX, man. You put the VIX on a daily, you back it up. You talk about right near the lower boundary line of where we've been on this VIX going back a year. You back it up even further than that. And you're talking about low levels, man. Nothing like we saw almost at all last year. We saw it once on one occasion in February. And yeah, you got to go back to when this market was really accelerating to highs and you were getting VIXs of what? Yeah, 15 and change. What was our low in 2021? 1410, the low on the VIX. Nonetheless, you're zooming in in the last two years since the Fed's been hiking. And as you see, pushing the lower boundary line on that VIX. And let's jump into the retail sales number. Retail sales report shows Americans pulled back on big ticket purchases as interest rates rose. It would make sense, right? The cost of doing business when your signature is on the paper, uh, not worth as much as it used to be when rates were near zero. Sales fall 0.1% in March, led by lower spending on vehicles. Yeah, the estimate was for a decline of about 0.5%. Purchase at stores, restaurants, and online declined. 1% in March, sales were revised in February to a 0.2% decline. Now that was previously down 0.4%. And I believe the number they were looking for in there was 0.5%. And uh, we'll jump into more of that as we get into the program. Let's see how Bloomberg puts it out there as well. And they got autos, look at that nice Beamer. That's a solid one, I like that Frank Grill, man. Uh, US retail sales fell for the second month. You check it out in terms of where we are here. Okay, change in retail sales month over month versus the change excluding autos and glass and gas. Gas, you exclude autos and gas, you're at minus 0.3 percent. Autos and gas, a huge chunk there, right? Uh, the value of sales at gasoline stations slid 5.5 percent, the most since April 2020. That's going to reverse, man. We've been talking about it. Okay, you see the decline. But boy, you talk about a huge one in terms of the decline for auto and gas. Market was looking for a 0.5% decline total, so it comes in at my, minus 0.1%. 
And yeah, you talk about credit card data. Now we get to get into the banks, man. They got some strong numbers in the banks. Okay, but these are the big banks. They should be doing okay. If anyone's doing okay in the banking sector, some of the articles we were reading about earlier this week were saying, man, the banks are in trouble. All but the big banks, they're in big trouble. Some Americans are starting to tighten their belt to stay afloat. Yeah, so Bank of America credit and debit usage decelerated last month to the weakest pace in two years as slower wage growth, fewer tax refunds, and the end of stimulus. Pandemic era benefits weighed on spending. Um, sales at restaurants and bars, the only service sector category in the report, edged up. Did you get that one? Services. Service sector category in the report, the only service sector category in the report, positive. It's going to be a wild one, man. Um, yeah, so we'll break into it this morning, man, but it's going to be wild in terms of how this market interprets it the last couple days, right? What's been going on? Well, you talk about huge reactions, man. Wednesday, I mean, for one moment, just check this out, folks. Within 25 pennies within one quarter of one point of the high. 41.77.75, you trade down a percent and a half by the end of the day Wednesday, and yesterday you get it all back. It'd be ironic if we gave it all back again today, man, but that's how this market is moving. A lot of uncertainty in this market, and uh, you're seeing the equities react so. I mean, PPI yesterday was a big number, okay, but we talked to our man Kevin Hinks. If you didn't check out the program, folks, you can always go back and watch anything that we do right on our YouTube channel. Just search TFNN. You can find the video. You can find the interviews. Uh, and Kevin was breaking down the PPI, man. I think he made a lot of sense, okay, talking about don't be swayed by the headline number, which was pretty astronomical. I mean, what did it go like? 4.5 to 2.9 or something like that. Maybe somebody has another den. It was a four handle down to a two handle. Okay, year over year on the PPI. But guess what? That had to do with energy. All right. And you're seeing it play out again today in retail sales. Retail sales dropping dramatically, having to do with energy and car sales. Uh, so we'll see how the market interprets it. But nonetheless, sitting at some lofty levels, man. And just taking a look at some of the levels we're dealing with here. Uh, let's back it up for a second. First of all, you don't have to be a master technician to see that we are bumping into an area of technical resistance, folks, okay? Doesn't mean we're gonna hold it. The one time we got above it in the last year was in August, before you saw the S&Ps trade down 800 points. Almost a 20% pullback over the period of about two months, the last time we got over this number. We got there once about a year ago in May. We got above it in August before the dramatic sell-off. We got basically right back to where we are right now in December. We got back to that area in January as well. Okay, call it ice, call it resistance, call it whatever you want, man. This market has faced some resistance at a price level of 4,200 in the S&Ps. That's basically where we're sitting right now at 4,165. Now you get a little bit of shorter term time frame. You'd look some Fibonacci's, okay? Where are we at? Well, if you take the area that we're at on March 7th, and the reason why I like this March 6th, March 7th peak, is because that's where we were when Chairman Powell came in front of Congress, okay? And he said, we gotta go higher for longer, man, right? And that's where you got a sell-off on the 7th, and then you got the banking crisis that began on the 9th, okay? So you sell down from about 4,060, you were up to 4,080 on March 6th, and where are we sitting at? We're sitting exactly at the one to 1 1.618 expansion of that pullback. So you got a couple technical areas in here, man. Doesn't mean it's gonna hold, folks but keep them on your radar and we will see S&P's down by eight points. We'll talk about the bank earnings when we come back. Stay tuned. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down about five points right now. Let's take a look at some of these banks, man. We'll go into a 15-minute chart in terms of where we're looking at. First of all, check this out, right? This is a chart of JP Morgan. You go back from October 101. You travel up to 144. What did we do, folks? Pulled right back to the 382. And what are we doing? We just jumped right up to 135 this morning. We don't have it on the chart yet, but just like that. Always nice, those Fibonacci areas, man. Doesn't mean they're going to work out, but at least you got your back against the wall when you're making a trade. Difficult to do on earnings day as you might get a pop one way or the other. But there's your short term time frame action, man. JP Morgan, what are you up? $7 right now, $6.50 right now on this equity. You spike to 137.66. And you know what? You know what might put a bid in your equity, folks? If you tell the market that you're going to make $81 billion from net interest income. That's like, uh, I was going to say risk-free return and ain't risk-free. Okay, but boy, that is easy income, man. When you're talking about the Fed just jacks rates, they're getting interest rates on that. They're getting net interest that they aren't paying out their customers. And that number is up from just $73 billion is what they talked about in January. So from January till now, from quarter to quarter, they are now adding $8 billion in income that they didn't think that they were going to make in January. Deposits climbed 2% from the end of last year. Net interest income soared 49% in the quarter, a bigger jump than analysts expected. The bank now expects that figure to clock in at $81 billion. There's no more millions, folks. It's all about billions, man. The U.S. economy continues to be on a generally healthy footings continues to be on generally healthy footings. We'll say that again. Consumers are still spending and have strong balance sheets and businesses are in good shape, Mr. Diamond said in a statement this morning. However, the storm clouds that we've been monitoring for the past year remain on the horizon and the banking industry turmoil adds to these risks. Well, they're navigating those risks pretty well, I'd say. This quarter alone, 20.7 billion dollars in net interest income what is that over 90 days man what are you talking about what is that almost what 
20, 200 million. I got to do simple math, man. 20 billion in, in 90 days. My goodness. Yeah, you're just doing mammoth numbers on a daily basis. Uh, significant sources of uncertainty in its full year outlook. Deposits. How about this one? 2.38 trillion at the end of March compared with 2.34 trillion just three months earlier. The influx of client money more than offset the drains from inflation and customers seeking higher yield alternatives. Pretty interesting, man. Now they did boost their loan reserves. Nothing too staggering though. 1.1 billion um, is what they put in there. They just made $21 billion over 90 days in net interest income. Okay, so they added $1.1 billion to their loan reserves. $868 million hit for the net investment securities losses is what's in there. Revenue from the firm's market operations fell. Fixed income trading flat from a year ago. Equities down 12%. And uh, traders faced a particularly tough comparison after an except exceptionally strong first quarter last year when market market volatility soared um, on the persistent inflation in Russia's. Yeah, I mean, do you remember what was happening the first quarter of last year, right? We had the Fed hiking. We had inflation really taking hold. And we had a war beginning between Russia and Ukraine. J.P. Morgan reiterated the adjusted expense guidance of about $81 billion um, that it gave in January. So that's adjusted expenses. Not bad. Matches right what they're talking about for net interest income. 220. Thank you. Thought it was right around there. My I mean, it's just a staggering amount of money. At first I said 20 million. I said, no, it's not 20 million. $220 million per day in net interest income, man. These big banks, and I've been saying it since the crisis, man. What are you doing in a small regional bank, especially if you have over $250,000, folks, okay? You're not going to lose your money. I don't think you are, but you're not guaranteed that. So why put that money at risk? That's really one of the crux of it. In terms of risk reward, right, is the risk worth it to put your money in there? And I'm going to I'm gonna get you an article. Give me one second, man, because you talk about banks, okay? You talk about risk. You talk about excessive risk that's unnecessary. Um, Credit Suisse, their bonds. Come on. I got to get it. Oh, hold on one second. Where am I? Here we go. So you talk about it, man. This is what happens when you don't manage your risk. Japan's largest banking group, yeah, how about just 1,500 clients alone losing $700 million in the Tier 1 Credit Suisse bond wipeout? Yeah, that's like, what, $500,000 per client, half a million dollars per client wiped out? Not small money, man. 1,500 clients. Now, I'm sure that they're well-to-do clients, okay, in terms of who lost this money, man, okay? Um, but Mitsubishi, UFJ Financial Group's wealthy clients lost more than $700 million on Credit Suisse, uh, the riskiest bonds, riskiest bonds purchased through Japan's bank's brokerage venture with Morgan Stanley. And they say they're, they're, they're huddling this morning. Uh, they're trying to contact those customers. They're doing a little bit of damage control. We are very sorry that we're causing our clients concern. We will continue to offer thorough explanations to customers who have been affected. Um, yeah, and they also said they're trying to make sure that they uh, that those customers were given appropriate warnings about the risks associated with that product. But it's just one of those illustrations, man. You know, if you're seeking out any type of extra yield over the risk-free rate of return, it ain't risk-free, man. And a lot of wealthy investors got wiped out for not really a lot of extra yield in those. So pay attention when you're looking at it in the banks as well, because there's a lot of people who are not positioned well in terms of the risk that they may be taking. And that's why you're seeing these big banks just taken in. And that's not going to end anytime soon, man. Not going to end anytime soon, in my opinion. All right, we'll continue the net interest income. Wells Fargo. So we got J.P. Morgan, Wells Fargo, and Citi out this morning, okay? Bank of America, I believe, is next week, but they're skyrocketing on these earnings as well. Wells Fargo, higher than expected net interest income, $13.3 billion in three months. What we say, J.P. Morgan just had about $21 billion, but pretty similar percentage number, up 45% from a year earlier and more than the 42% that the market was looking for. Uh, and there you go. $13.3 billion, rising rates. So the firm added $643 million to its loan reserves. Let's see, net charge-offs jumped 17% compared to a year ago. So they got $1.2 billion. Market was looking for about $909 billion, $19 million. They're shoring up their reserves there. 
uh, primarily tied to the firm's office loans inside its commercial real estate portfolio. Keep your eye on that one, man, right? And also added reserves for credit card and auto loans in the quarter. Yeah, and uh, in recent months, I would say so, man. You know, you got all this commercial real estate. You got a ton of offices sitting at pretty much record, record vacancy rates at a time when you have interest rates dramatically higher. So that's not a good combination, to say the least. The company reported an 8% drop in firm-wide deposits, noting the decline was fueled by customers migrating to higher-yield alternatives and an increase in consumer spending. Average deposit costs soared to 83 basis points compared to just three. Still, 83 basis points is nothing compared to what you can get for your money right now, right? Yeah, and interesting when you compare the two, man. So that's Wells Fargo. There's your J.P. Morgan chart. Train higher this morning, but not quite the same as J.P. Morgan, man. I mean, we just saw J.P. Morgan adding money, right? Wells Fargo, 8% drop in deposits. I don't know. Doesn't seem like they're competing that well. All right, we're coming back for the open. We're going to finish up with City. City positive by about seven, 70 cents as well. It's going to be an interesting open on Friday, folks. Stay tuned. we got a lot to talk about. Don't go away. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Welcome back, folks. We got markets open. S and P negative by about four points to kick things off. We got the Nasdaq 100 negative by 59. Dow negative by 22. And you get the Russell positive territory at 1811 right now. We finish it up with the three big banks. We jump over to City. City up 1.8 percent. Let's see how the banks are opening before we do. Wells Fargo up about. Excuse me. J.P. Morgan up 5.5 percent. Wells Fargo up 1% there. And Bank of America, again, not with their numbers, but their numbers out next week up 2.8%. So get into Citi's numbers. We haven't done these yet. Up about 2% for Citi. Surprise jump in profit as rate moves fuel trading. So we saw net interest income all over the place everywhere else. Uh, how about trading? Revenue from fixed income currencies and commodities trading unexpectedly rose 4% to $4.5 billion in the first quarter as clients reacted to changing interest rates that helped defy analyst predictions of a drop in profits. Uh, and you get into the numbers though for this one. Citigroup provisions for loan losses more than doubled to $2 billion. Now what did we go over? JP Morgan was something like a billion. Um, we'll pull it back up to cheap because, so Citi has 1.33 trillion in deposits which are unchanged. OK, and they got two billion dollars in loan loss reserves versus you have J.P. Morgan, which is almost double the deposits at two point four trillion. OK, and meanwhile, their loan loss reserves. What do they say? At about a billion, one point one, I think they were. Where are we? Yeah, one point one billion. So J.P. Morgan has almost double the deposits on hand and their loan reserves are half of what they are at city just something that stuck out at me worth noting uh and probably one of the reasons why you got jp morgan as usual man leading the pack up 5.3 percent wells fargo right now up less than one percent city up 2.2 percent bank of america on the heels of their uh the other bank earnings up 2.8 percent all right i mentioned boeing boeing down 5.1 percent this thing's been on quite a tear there's your daily. You back it up to 120 bucks in October. You trade up to $220 a couple months ago. We're back to kind of the lower trading area. We were down to about 194 in March. We were down to a price of about 192 in March as well earlier in the month. And we pull over the news for Boeing. Not, like, not what you want to hear that they're pausing deliveries because of problems with the 737 MAX in light of history for obvious reasons. It's going to have uh, likely have to reduce deliveries of the 737 MAX airplane in the near term because of a parts problem. Yeah. Spirit Aerosystems, Spirit Aerosystems manufactures some of the fuselages used in the Boeing jets and said in a statement it notified Boeing of a quality issue of certain 737 models. Not what you want to hear. Again, uh, it's the latest in a string of production issues for Boeing and its customers amid an industry-wide shortage of new jets. Uh, the supplier informed the company of a non-standard, whatever that means, right, manufacturing process was used in two fittings in aft fuselages. It said it affects uh, certain 737 MAX 8 planes, the company's most popular model, with customers including American Airlines and Southwest. It also affects the 737 MAX 7, 737 8200, and the P-8. Not an immediate safety of flight issue, and the in-service fleet can continue operating safely. They notify the FAA the issue. It's working to expect, inspect and address the fuselages as needed. Um, yeah, but that's the issue will likely affect a significant number of undelivered 737 MAX airplanes, both in production and in storage. When you hear a company using the word, excuse me, significant, Pay attention. Yeah. We expect lower near-term 737 MAX deliveries while this required work is completed. We regret the impact of this issue we'll have on affected customers and are in contact with them concerning their delivery schedule. We will provide additional information in the days and weeks ahead as we better understand the delivery impacts. They call this significant, folks, and the market's reacting rightfully so. Now, the flip side of this is that's how you should want them to respond, right? As a, even as a shareholder, you find something out like that, that's how you want them to respond, man. The way they responded in the past, not how you want them to respond. Uh, from a humanity perspective and from a shareholder perspective, you pay the price on both levels, man. Uh, absolutely remarkable. This thing was up to 446. 
And that's where the 737 MAX was starting to play out in terms of, and then you got into COVID when airline air travel just ceased to exist and you trade from 343 down to 89 bucks. You make it back to 278. Yeah, and then quite the slide to lower prices right out of that channel line, right above. Not sure that channel line plays out anymore for Boeing. But nonetheless, look at these markets, man, right back up to basically flat on the S&Ps. We'll put it to a five-minute chart, 41.72 as we march on. Let's see how notes and bonds are trading right now as we get some movements on the retail sales number. A little bit of a recoil from the lows. Let's see what we're talking about on yields right now. We'll pull up the yield curve for a moment. And what are we looking at? Let's see. We got the 10-year at 3.5%. We got the two-year at about 4.1%. And look at the numbers, though, man, right? Quite a spike on the two-year. 10 basis points, man. The 10-year up about five basis points. The two-year up by 10 basis points. Big numbers, man. And then let's see what's happening in the dollar index as well. Dollar index up to about 101.23 right now. Now, folks, we talk to our man Teddy Kegstad every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Always have a great conversation talking some Forex, talking some yields, bonds, currencies, and, of course, commodities. Crude playing into that especially as well. Teddy's got an outstanding webinar coming up this Wednesday. Okay, just head on over to the front page of TFN. If you haven't tried it out, folks, I know that sometimes you may look at Forex and say, well, I don't trade Forex. It's not going to be worth it for me. I love having Teddy on talking to him. He has a vast amount of knowledge, experience. And in this market right now, with the way the commodities are influencing things, with the way that yields are influencing things, in terms of yields influencing currencies, influencing markets, influencing rates, Federal Reserve coming in, it's a great time to just understand the factors that are occurring in this market. It's a webinar this coming Wednesday from four till five. He'll be in there with subscribers. You can sign up. It's only $97, folks. You get the newsletter for a month. He's got new issues every Monday. And yeah, check it out. You'll get the newsletter. You'll get the webinar on Wednesday. It's $97. And please, I always tell people, if you don't like it, like it, just cancel it and get a money back refund. That's why it's there. There's no shame in that at all, man. I, I wish everybody would try every single product we have. And if you don't like it, cancel it, request that money back, guarantee refund, and, and it will send it out with joy, man, because I appreciate you trying out what we have. That's why we have that there. So don't think it's like, ah, I don't want to request a refund. You know, it's not. Do it. Just try it out and request the refund. Cancel it. You get the refund. It's that simple, man. Uh, I'm looking forward to that webinar coming up on Wednesday. And boy, we got a lot to talk about in these markets, to put it lightly, right? Let's see how the VIX is trading as we push highs right now. Check it out. 1764. Are we going to see a 16 handle on the VIX today? It's possible, folks. This market, you just can't slow it down. There's a new recent high, 41.78. We get above the highs we had on Wednesday. We get above the highs we had on Thursday, 41.78.75. Absolutely remarkable, man. Now, let's talk about the recent highs we had. 42.08. You get above 42.08. You get above 42.17. And you're going back all the way to August of last year. Remarkable acceleration in these markets. Stay tuned, folks. We'll go over some of the other equities we got coming up with earnings next week. We'll be right back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open. 
to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today. And try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S and P's up by four points. Nasdaq 100 barely in the red. We just got the Dow climbing into positive territory right now. You got the Russell holding on to slight gains as well. Yes, yeah, so we're talking about earnings next week. So we get some of the other big giants out there in terms of Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley out there. Let's jump into it. Let's see Morgan uh, on Monday. Excuse me. We got Schwab out with their numbers. You get State Street out with their numbers. We got a lot of the other banks right coming in with their numbers next week. On Tuesday, you're going to get Bank of America out with their numbers. We get Goldman Sachs on Tuesday as well. I get, let's see, I think we get Morgan Stanley on Wednesday. Let's see. Yeah, we sure do. So we got Morgan Stanley on Wednesday, Goldman Sachs on Tuesday, Bank of America on Tuesday. I think we also get Lockheed Martin on Tuesday with their numbers as well. As I mentioned, some of the other banks as well, Bank of New York Mellon, BK, out with their numbers on Tuesday. Let's see, jumping around on these lists I got here. There's some good numbers, man, coming out. Uh, Ally Financial will be out with their numbers on Wednesday. U.S. Bank Corp out with their numbers on Wednesday. On Thursday, we get AT&T and American Express. Right, we're coming into it, man. AT&T on Thursday out with their numbers. American Express on Thursday out with their numbers. We get D.R. Horton, DHI, out with their numbers on Thursday. That'll be an interesting one. Let's check out their chart right now. Yeah, you talk about an acceleration, man. Did you think that would be pushing highs of last year when D.R. Horton was trading at $60 in June? All right? If I had told you that the Fed was still hiking and we had a banking crisis going on in June, and I said in April, we're still going to have the Fed hiking. Still. They're still going to be hiking. And we're still going to have core inflation at 5.6%, and we're going to have bank tightening going on. Where do you think D.R. Horton's going to be? Not a lot of people would have said $100, man, from 60. Nonetheless, there it is on the chart. Remarkable. Uh, what else do we got? We got Rite Aid coming out with their numbers on Thursday. Check out some. Ooh. Looks like they're going BK, man. Yeah, out with their numbers on Thursday. Uh, that's not an attractive chart. My goodness. Let's see what else we got. We got Alaska Air on Thursday. It's going to be fast and furious, man. And the week after that, we're going to get tech companies. Yeah, still some banks in there. All right, let's see what we got on Friday. Procter & Gamble out with their numbers on Friday. Freeport McMoran out with their numbers on Friday. Let's see, we also got AutoNation somewhere, I believe, in there as well. What's that, AN? Yeah, AutoNation... Yeah, they're going to be out with their numbers on Thursday as well. AutoNation. Cars always been in the press recently. Look at this market, man. Look at this market. 
can't hold a good market down, man. I say it half in jest, folks. Yeah, we spike above the highs yesterday, 41.82. We back things up on a daily basis. And as I mentioned, it's going to be interesting to see where we go from here, folks, because we are pushing a technical level that it's just bumping up against that area right now. And if we blow past there, I guess 4,300 is the next stop, right? That's where we were in August. Hey, it speaks for itself. It speaks for itself, and we'll leave it at that, man. All right, what else we got going on in this market? Yeah, we talked about... Well, let's talk a little bit of BlackRock why, as well. Assets exceed $9 trillion in the wake, wake of the bank failures. Now, what's interesting here is, right, I just went over the numbers for some of the biggest banks out there, right? BlackRock's got $9 trillion, folks. JP Morgan, what do they have? $2.34 trillion. And BlackRock has $9 trillion absolutely mammoth in terms of the numbers they're dealing with man uh as stock and bond markets rallied and depositors sought cover following the collapse of several banks net inflows to the firm's funds 110 billion dollars long-term investment products which include mutual funds and etfs added 103 billion beating the 84 billion is what the market was looking for and let's jump over to them blk up 3.7 percent and there's the volatility for you on their numbers man nine trillion dollars not bad uh yeah so they got eight billion dollars into their cash management products in the quarter today's crisis and confidence in the regional bank sector will further accelerate capital markets growth and blackrock will be a central player that is their ceo larry fink saying in a statement they're positive this morning assets under management Climbing 6% since the, end, since the end of last year when they were just at $8.6 I mean, imagine that, right? Just since last year, that 5.8% rise represents more than $400 billion in terms of assets under management. It's absolutely stark when you put it to a company like Citi that only has $1.33 on hand. And meanwhile, you got companies like BlackRock adding $400 plus billion just in the last year alone, pushing 9 trillion dollars for their number adjusted net income falling to 1.2 billion or 793 a share market was looking for 767 revenue declining 4 point to 4.2 billion which is what the market was looking for fixed income etfs took in a net 33.3 billion fixed income etfs right well equity etfs had outflows fixed income etfs took in money etfs had outlo outflows Actively managed equity funds also had outflows. Yeah, fixed income ETFs, folks. Fixed income, man. It is going to be competition for equities for some time, to say the least. Look at this market, man. Absolutely remarkable where we go from here. All right. Well, let's see. Let's see where. Let's see where the one to six point eight expansion would be on this run, because we're going to be pushing it, man. Forty two oh eight. And where is it? Look at that. Maybe that's where we're going, man. So I'm going to take this one off because we're blowing past that area slightly. And that is on a very short-term time frame, okay? That's just looking at, hey, a 1 to 1 1.618 expansion. I mean, maybe we do that in two days. Not often do you get 60 points down, folks, and 100 points up in the span of two days in this market. But maybe that's where we're heading. It would be... Ironic if 4208 is the spot, considering it would bring you literally to the tick of where we were in the markets on February 2nd before you saw this thing trade down, what, 350 points in the span of about six weeks in this market. We'll see where we go. We got a lot of companies out with their earnings next week, and then we're getting into the main event of earnings with the tech stocks, uh, Apple, all the way into May. So they are a few weeks out they're late to the party in terms of we get earnings before that man because we got amazon out with their numbers april 27th so they're going to be out with their numbers in less than two weeks as i said i just went over the earnings we're getting next week right the 17th to the 21st and then we get the tech stocks beginning the last week of april and then we get apple the first week in may so amazon is april 27th 
Yeah, Google earlier in that week, April 25th. Microsoft shares, April 25th. Tesla shares, they're going to be April 19th. All right, didn't even get them in the mix. They're next Wednesday, Tesla shares. That'll be an interesting one as always. You know, I was listening to Bloomberg yesterday. NVIDIA all the way out on May 24th. There's something like seven stocks, folks, have contributed 90% of the S&P rally this year alone, and you can probably name them. All right, we'll talk about that when we come back as well. Leading the pack, those big tech stocks. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with the Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In the Tiger's Den, then you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFNN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps up by 12 points. Quite a rocket ship, man. Up to 41.88. We're trading 41.85 to get the NASDAQ 100 up by 29. Dow up by three points right now. The Russell up by eight, pushing the highs of Wednesday as well. Checking back on some of those retail sales numbers, just checking into the different categories, okay? Gas stations, a big decline, 5.5%. Department stores, 2.5%. Electronics, negative 2.1%. Building materials, minus 2.1%. You got clothes, minus 1.7%. Cars and parts, minus 1.6%. Furniture, minus 1.2%. Groceries stay the same. Interesting. And then on the positive side, restaurants and bars up by 0.1%. Sporting and hobby up by 02 Health personal care up by 03 And online up 1.9%. So just some of the numbers in the retail sales numbers. And as I was talking about, okay, checking out the seven 
equities. Now this is, I saw seven, I saw 20, whatever it is, folks, okay? Google, Apple, Meta, NVIDIA, Amazon, Microsoft, and Tesla, together they've gained $2.1 trillion in market cap this year. The S&P 500 has added 2.4 trillion. Yeah, so you got those seven equities basically adding 90% of what the S&P has done this year. So keep your eye on the big tech companies, man, because it has not been a broad rally, even though the markets have been just tremendous, right? And yeah, cherry picking some of those, man, okay? NVIDIA is up 1.2% today. There's a run for you from 140 to 280, okay? You check out Apple shares going from what? 125 to 165, Google shares, go from 90 to 110, uh, Tesla in there, of course, running from about 111 up to over 200 at one point. What were some of the other ones in there? Meta, Meta, the other one in there. Yeah, you talk about a run from 120 to 220. So keep your eye on that, man, because not a broad rally, even though you kind of get the feeling. That surprised me. I knew tech stocks were leading, but did you know that those seven equities added 2.1 trillion and the whole S&P added 2.4? Thanks so much for starting your trading day with me, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up live next. Have a great Friday, folks. Have a great weekend. Thanks for starting your day with me. And uh, stay tuned for our man Basil Chapman coming up next. We'll talk to you on Monday, folks. Have a great one.